Religion is just bad science. Science is just bad religion. Um, two ways of looking at the two as functions or comparisons or um, evaluations of each one in relation with the other. Um, science deals with the outer world, the world of falsifiability, whereas religion, in my definition or some people's definition of it, deals with the inner world of experience, which is not falsifiable. <laughs> You can't say that such and such a person did not have an experience. You can say that their experience did not match your experience of the same event. In other words, a hundred people look up in the sky. Only one person sees the flying spaghetti monster. You can then sort of falsify that person's exterior perception. You can say, okay, we all agree that there's no flying spaghetti monster up there. And now, <clears throat> what we can't falsify is that person's experience. Experiences, according to the Hindu or Eastern theory of karma, leave a mark on us. It's karma. Karma isn't this golden rule thingy, or at least my understanding of it isn't that. It's um, it's um, more to do with the marks that experience of anything leaves on you. 99 people out of 100, when they looked up in the sky, neither saw the flying spaghetti monster, nor had the experience of seeing it. Those two are not necessarily the same thing. One person did have the experience of seeing it. Now we can say that they didn't see that because it, it wasn't up there for us to falsify. But the mark of having had that experience is there. And science can't do a thing about that. It's not falsifiable because you have to you have to get you have to experience someone else's experience. So you sort of say, all right. Um, because 99 people out of 100 didn't see it, and there's no scientific explanation or, I guess, backing for having seen that, we can say that it didn't happen. What science cannot say is that that person did not have that experience. We can simply say that that experience is based on an illusion. That's fine. But the experience itself is not an illusion. The experience took place. Now. This calls into question, of course, um, reality versus illusion. Which is which? Um, there's the rub, right? So the external scientific explanation is there was an illusion because something cannot be uh, verified or falsified. And yet, you can't falsify somebody else's experience. They had that experience. That's the inner life. That's the inner um, the inner effect. Now that brings me to sort of in a sense to the larger issue or the wider issue of blasphemy I suppose. Falsifiability. Um, if you sort of say okay what are the consequences to us saying that religion is crap? Okay. There are no consequences. Nothing happens when I stand out there and I decide that I'm going to insult Krishna or Allah or uh, say that it's all garbage or whatever. See, no lightning strikes, nothing happens. Um, I will say that, say, I don't know, um, God, Yahweh, is the all-powerful being that will smite all of his enemies and anyone who blasphemes against him will pay for it. All right. <laughs> I can go out there and blaspheme right now and I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to get struck by lightning. I'm pretty darn sure that I'm going to get away with it and, and unless there's human intervention, um, 
the upshot of my blasphemies overtly are going to be nothing. Um, so much for scientific uh, examination of religious claims. Now, let's take a scientific claim. Um, if I pick up a stick of dynamite, which has, you know, which is made of something that has certain scientific properties, strike a match and set the match to the fuse. Now I can say that that's crap, that all these um, scientific laws that say that this thing is going to detonate and have a very disruptive um, effect on the physical structure of anything within a certain radius of it. I can say that that's garbage. I can blaspheme against that science. But if I stand there with it in my hand or between my teeth, <laughs> um, blaspheme all you want and you know, say, all right, all right, uh, Mr. Dynamite, hit me with your best shot, the same way as, say, I would blaspheme against God. Um, <laughs> the dynamite is going to have something to say about that in a way that Yahweh doesn't have anything to say about me standing in front of the church, calling down all kinds of vile curses upon God. I can blaspheme against science all I want, but at the end of the day, <laughs> um, I stand in front of a speeding bus, I can say that the laws of inertia are crap, but watch what happens. Whereas I blaspheme against science, or sorry, against religion, nothing happens. But does nothing happen when you blaspheme against experience? Um, there's an interesting article that I'm, I've linked to below here. It's about what's being diagnosed. Now, take this as you will. It's not, um, it's just in the infancy. But there's the Somebody's come up with the idea that you, you can actually lack the capacity to enjoy music. Now, maybe, maybe not. But you may be able to, you may have the, you may lack the capacity, and this is a truly chilling thought. You may lack the capacity to have positive experience. Or you may have lost that capacity. Um, people in a state of depression often lack that capacity. You lack the capacity to have positive experience, to feel joy, to, to feel like food tastes good. You don't enjoy sex the way you used to. Um, that sort of thing. So. Religion deals with the inner life, okay? Science deals with the outer life. Somebody plays music, music was heard. 99 people out of 100 are transported out of themselves by this beautiful piece of music. One person feels nothing. And they might even feel a lack of something because they can see everybody else around them enjoying this music and going, you know, this kind of thing that you see people do when they listen to a particular piece of music that they particularly enjoy. Another person feels nothing. This person may have actually just falsified, um, made experience falsifiable, but only to themselves. This person is not really comparing experience, but they're saying that what this experience does to these people doesn't do it for me, or apparently it doesn't. Because I listen to a piece of music and I get nothing out of it. Um, if you deal with somebody who's depressed, and you try to explain to them what that music does for you, there's a very good chance they're going to say something extremely harsh and cynical. Like, you can take that and shove it, or it's crap, or it's garbage, it doesn't mean anything. And or even better, cross their arms, prove it. Prove that that music means something to you. You can't. <laughs> uh, it doesn't work like that. Now, I blaspheme against 
uh, the laws of science, and I put a stick of dynamite in my mouth and put a match to it. Boom. Okay, what's the effect? Well, my body is blown to pieces. I blaspheme against the inner life. I blaspheme against the experience of all the good things in life. I say that there are no good things in life. There's just the absence of bad things. Um, when I blaspheme in front of others, I could disrupt their experiences, which is why we have blasphemy laws, because other people are feeling that sort of nice feeling you get when there's music, and you're walking around wrecking that for them. It seems to be a fragile thing. So they will coerce you. They'll shut you up. Um... What is the cause, or sorry, what is the effect of that on them? Well, you've messed up their positive experience. So they can stop you. Or they'll just move to a place where you're not there to be uh, dealt with. Just you know, put on a headset and listen to the music and you can blaspheme all you want. And I'm just going to sit there in my blissful little world with my music and rock back and forth and listen to it. You can say all you want that it's all crap, but I can't hear you. <laughs> um, that, in a sense, is invoking a sort of, ah, that person is blaspheming, so I'm just going to blot him out. Okay, we know that the effect of blaspheming uh, on other people's can be on other people can be negative. What's the effect on yourself? There are good things in life, say a lot of people. There are positives in life, say a lot of people. But the positives have to be experienced for them to be positive. You can't just say that eating a chocolate bar is a positive experience because well, somebody might not like chocolate, or they might not be in the mood for it. Um, but the experience you get out of eating chocolate for this person seems to be consistently good. But it doesn't mean that chocolate equals good, because the chocolate and the experience of the chocolate are two different things. Um, so, when you sort of, when you, if you ever met a cynical, angry, sort of dismissive, depressed person, they can, they're sort of, the wand that they wave at everything that you see as good and pure and noble and wonderful in life is a very powerful, blaspheming wand. They can disrupt your experience of that which is good in life. It's a very difficult weapon to counteract, um, which is why, of course, blasphemy is often so harshly dealt with. If I walk around Mecca during the Hajj and I eat a bacon double cheeseburger and I'm naked or whatever, that's going to have a very powerful effect on everybody's inner state or enough people's inner state that I actually will be a disruptive influence there. So. I think I know what will happen. Something akin to me sticking the stick of dynamite in my mouth and lighting it. Only a human being will do that. But what is the effect on me if I turn all of my own positive experiences or potential positive experiences to shit? Making positive experiences into negative experiences seems to be an easy thing to do. A house of cards that's easily knocked down. But just because it's easily knocked down doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, that the experience isn't there. Um, you go to any um, cheap sort of department store and you go to the se section where they're selling posters or pictures or stuff like that. And you might see this really cheesy looking print, which you see everywhere I, for some reason, of this um, unicorn. And it's all in pastel purples and pinks um, that's sort of glowing and just this 
really cloyingly sweet image of this mythological creature that people will then buy and put on their wall and say, this really uplifts me. I look at that and I go, oh, God, that's so cheesy. There's, it's probably made by slave labor in China and or somewhere in the third world. And it's even if it wasn't, it's just such bad art. Well, to somebody, that is profoundly positive experience. But to me, it isn't. I can wave my bullshit wand and turn that piece of really sickly sweet art, quote unquote, into a real insult to me, to my own sensibilities. I look at that unicorn and I'm worse off than if I never looked at it because it's just, it's, it's repulsed me to that point. We can think of so many pleasures that, or I shouldn't even say pleasures, but joys that people feel and we can say, what a pile of old cods that is. What, like how disgusting all of this is. Somebody's pleasure offends me. Somebody's joy. I wouldn't even call this a pleasure. I'd say it's a positive experience. It offends me. You actually get something out of that crap? What? That's the exact equivalent of smoking crack. You know, there's no difference. To that person, that's a positive value state which I, ha I have no capacity to feel. Now, most people just have certain tastes. What does it for you doesn't do it for me. I understand that you have certain tastes and I have certain tastes. Never the twain shall meet, whatever. I certainly don't believe in taking all those unicorn paintings out of the store and burning them or prosecuting somebody for having that garbage for sale. But I might, over the period of years, get so arrogant that I'm so sick of seeing this stuff that I do feel like doing that. I feel like walking in there with a can of lighter fluid and a match. And poof, there. Once and for all, I got those unicorns. Um, but that very tendency turns against, can turn against, I suppose, whatever positive experiences I have. The consequences of blaspheming against science are very apparent because science deals with externals. The consequences of blaspheming against experience are nowhere near as apparent to everybody else, but they are very apparent to oneself. Um, if I say life is full of positive experiences, I don't really have any way of proving that. But when somebody goes, prove it, and I fail to do so, who has actually been blasphemed against, or who has actually been injured here? Um, blocking one's own capacity for joy, for the numinous, for feeling good and feeling happy and feeling at peace and serene has only one victim. That's me. But it, I'm a victim of that just as surely as the guy with the stick of dynamite in his, in his mouth. It could be argued that without that, without the capacity to feel life's positive experiences, life is indeed not worth living. Um, just because you yourself and this is an extremely harsh thing to say possibly one of the harshest things one can say just because you yourself aren't feeling the positive experience doesn't mean that positive experience does not exist you're just missing that ability or perhaps you've consciously or in some sense consciously, acted to sabotage it. We can sabotage it in others fairly quickly through the, act, the, uh, the medium of overt blasphemy. 
I can wreck a kid's birthday party quickly by a few nasty acts. Um, and we can see what happens. But when I blaspheme against myself, against my own inner life, um, it's not always so apparent what's going on. You can do that. You can consciously uh, or on some level mentally intervene to wreck your own positive experiences and no one else can see the evidence of that except you everybody can see the evidence of a stick of dynamite detonating inner and outer life inner and outer blasphemy inner and outer religion maybe 